Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be looking at a very cool app called Polycam 3D. It allows you to create 3D models just using your phone. I saw this advertised to me on Instagram and I was intrigued because 3D modeling is like a very specific discipline and the idea that you could create usable 3D models with your phone was wild. So I tried it, I'm gonna show you how it works, what I thought of it and what the final result was. And then part two of this video is going to be on my other channel where I use what I created in Polycam to create this super fun 3D animation. If you're interested in that, I will link to it down below if it's already live. But if you're watching this before that video posts, make sure you subscribe to that other channel. I'll put a link to it right here. Okay, so like I said, Polycamp 3D allows you to create 3D models with your phone. And you could either do an actual space using what's called LiDAR mode, or you can do specific objects with the photo mode. Polycam also has this whole community on their website where you can see what other people have created and download them if you are a Polycam subscriber. The subscription is at this time, about $80 a year. And I'm always hesitant to talk too much about pricing because prices can change if you're watching this in the future. So make sure if you're interested in Polycam to go investigate the pricing on your own. I will link to it down below. So let's talk about the process. As you saw, I decided to shoot this delicious Rice Krispie treat. Now I set it on a white background and lit it from every side because I wanted it to be on a really simple, clean background. So it was easier for Polycam to cut it off the background. So once you're all set up, you're gonna open the app and hit the plus sign. And there are a few options here. First, you wanna decide between LiDAR and photo. Now LiDAR is typically for capturing actual like spaces that you're in or really, really, really big objects. Whereas photo is for small objects like this Rice Krispie treat. Your next option is to choose whether you want the camera to take pictures on auto or manually. I found this a little confusing at first because the auto looks like a video camera icon, but what it means is that Polycam will burst pics for you. And I do think this is the better option to choose. And what you wanna do is move around the object incrementally as you feel the vibration of your camera taking the picture, you'll actually feel it. You'll see a progress bar at the bottom as you make captures. And you need to keep going until this line turns green so that you know that Polycam has at least enough data to make a rendering. But I do think that more images is better. So even though I've hit this green threshold, I'm gonna keep going. Now to get the underside of this Rice Krispie treat, I can actually touch it and flip it over, but you have to do this in small incremental movements. So there's at least 50% overlap between images so Polycam can better track the image. And once you feel confident that you've got it all, hit the stop button. Now, once you've taken all the photos, you can actually go back and review every single image and discard anything that you think was kind of a mistake and that you think might disrupt the track. Next, you're gonna wanna choose your level of detail. I'm gonna choose raw because that's gonna give me the most detailed professional results. And I'm also gonna toggle on object masking since Polycam recommends you do that for small detailed objects like this one. Now I'm gonna hit the upload and process button. I've noticed that it takes less than 10 minutes for these things to process. And once it's done, you can flip the object around on your phone and view it from all angles. Once you're satisfied, you can export it. So you can actually create a video of your object right in the Polycam app, or you can export it to one of these many, many file types on your phone. I'm gonna select USDZ because that is the file type I need for Apple Motion where I'm actually gonna be creating my animation in part two of this video. After I did all that, I had my brave husband come in and take a big bite of this Rice Krispie treat so I could reshoot the entire thing for my Rice Krispie animation and did the exact same process for that as well. So here you can see my finished results. The whole Rice Krispie treat actually looks pretty good, but the one with the bite actually has a missing hole on the underside. I know for my personal purposes that I don't need to see the underside of this Rice Krispie treat at this point. So for me, it's fine, but you might wanna redo the whole process again if you get that kind of result. It definitely takes a little practice. Now let's talk about LiDAR on Polycam. Here's the video of me capturing my living and dining room. And then this is the finished result. I feel like it was really hard to capture a room really cleanly with the LiDAR function. You can see that there's some holes here in some areas, but then other areas came out 
super detailed. The other thing that's weird is like, what about these walls? Like how does Polycam know when to start or stop? And I do think the workflow for the LiDAR function, if you're trying to capture a big space, is that you would bring this file into a program like Blender and clean it up. Like Polycam's just sort of the start of things, not really where you're gonna get a primo finished result. On the other hand, the model that I made of the Rice Krispie was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. So I think it sort of depends on what your end use is about how satisfied you're going to be with the product you get out of Polycam. A few other thoughts that I have is that what's weird about their website is that you can't download as many file types on the website as you can with your phone. Like USDZ is not even an option on the Polycam website, but somehow it is on the phone. I definitely think the website could use a lot a lot of improvement. The app is definitely a much better version. Another thing I noticed is that Polycam has a lot of difficulty with reflective services. Like for instance, I tried to capture this Pellegrino water bottle and the bottle looks super warped. I also tried to shoot this candle stand in my home and this has a very mirrored top. And again, the surface does not look great. So I think the trick to Polycam is A, to really kind of practice and get the hang of it. B, be really patient. Even if you get the green progress bar while you're capturing, I definitely think it's worth keeping going and getting even more captures. I also think that picking your object is a little bit of a trick as well. This Rice Krispie treat is super irregular looking in terms of texture. So any like mistakes that Polycam may have had are certainly concealed by the nature of the element I chose. So I think Polycam is really cool if you're interested in this. I do think it's worth the $80 a year. Um, but if you're looking to do something super professional looking, you may need to sharpen your blender skills and really polish it up. You guys, did you like this video? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Don't forget to check out part two of this video coming soon to YouTube. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you again.